So um, the road safety advertising campaign has been in the market for quite some years, but with regards to the drug driving campaign, um, we're still in the very early stages. We haven't been in the market for long at all. We were briefly um, briefly in the market with the legislation, road si roadside legislation change back in 2009, um, and that was literally just for, from the perspective of public information. So we went out, informed the public that this was changing so that they knew that they could be stopped on the roadside if they were uh, looking like they may be impaired by drugs. And then in early 2012, we launched into, um, as Simon mentioned, long-term, meaning long-term, um, a behavioural change campaign. And we grappled with where to start for quite some time because it was a brand new issue um, that we were putting on the table for the New Zealand public. It was illegal in part, um, and little information on who was actually driving was, was known at, the, at that time. So it was challenging to say the least. Um, and as we've heard, in comparison to drink driving, far less is known about the issue of drug driving in New Zealand and its impact on road safety. But not surprisingly to us, um, evidence suggests that drugs may have a big, play a bigger factor in crashes than um, officially reported. So our job with the advertising programme was to get the issue on the table for the New Zealand public. It's a complex issue, drug driving, with multiple substances, some illegal, some, um, some illegal, some legal, and each of them having a different effect on the body and therefore on driving. The audience is potentially very broad, um, and the research into target audiences and target segments is limited. So unlike drink driving as well, safe limits are not yet established or cannot be established, um, and it's difficult to enforce, as Kerry alluded to earlier, um, particularly in New Zealand at the moment. So all of this poses rather significant challenges for an advertising programme. To achieve long-term behaviour change, we had to start at the very beginning, and we're still at the very beginning, effectively. Um, so January 2012... We focused on getting the issue on the table, on raising the awareness with a broad New Zealand audience that drug driving is a real thing, that we share the roads with those impaired by drugs every day. The aim was to get people talking about it, to create conversation and to get debate. One of our challenges was that many par people currently believed that, they, that there was no change in their driving ability if they were impaired by drugs, or in fact that it made them a better driver. So we wanted people to reconsider these views, which were probably very complacent and sometimes ignorant, um, about driving on drugs, and actually question, get them to question how safe it was to drive under the influence. We did this by exploring the logic that taking drugs impairs your driving. Seems rather simple. After all, taking certain drugs affects our bodies. That's why we take them in some way. And potentially getting them to realise that that effect could therefore have an effect on their driving. So our approach was deliberately provocative, um, but tried really hard to not be judgmental. We encouraged people to talk about this sensitive issue and, and be open about talking about it, which is often difficult when you're talking about an illegal, an illegal issue. Um, but we didn't want to put words in their mouths or tell them what to think or what to say. We did this by initially producing a campaign that captured passengers' real reactions um, when they perceived that their driver was impaired by drugs, and we did this by filming over four days about 150 passengers, unknowing passengers. Um, they were actually want to be actors because they were auditioning for an ad, but just not the ad that we had them lined up for. And they were being driven by four actors, um, ones that we paid as to those that were wanting to be paid, um, who pretended to be impaired by drugs, one of them on cannabis, one on prescription medication, one on ecstasy, and one on pee. Um, and we captured their reactions when they suddenly realised that their driver could be um, on drugs. Some of them were calm and accepting of this. Some of them were um, actually amused and were just kind of encouraging the driver, it'll only take 20 minutes and you'll feel fine. And some were completely horrified to the point that they stopped the driver and uh, offered to drive um, and said that they'd rather walk. So the, pink, the campaign simply posed the question at the end of it, drug driving, do you think it's a problem? Phase one um, was television-led. 
Um, and this was led literally to get the awareness out there to the masses. But the campaign aimed to do more than simply raise awareness, as I've said. It sought to, cre sought to create conversations and really get people talking about the issue. We also used appropriate channels to encourage discussion and put a weekly poll out across the nation, um, encouraging people to respond to that poll. And we used many different ways to do that. We used a YouTube microsite where they could see the content, they could comment, they could vote on the, on the poll. Web forums, display ads. We had a digital billboard which clearly wasn't facing any traffic because we didn't want to create another road safety obstacle with a big distraction that was moving as they were driving by. Um, and used QR codes and, and texting for responses to the poll. Facebook pages. Street posters, even um, touch screens at Z service stations to get people to have their say. And we partnered with radio stations as well. Rather than placing ads on, on the radio stations, we partnered with the stations so that we used their DJs to create that conversation with their listeners and get them, the listeners to respond and feed information through to those radio stations' Facebook pages. So we basically tried to get the message out in as many ways as possible, across as many channels as possible, and to as many people as possible so that we could encourage anyone and everyone to have their say. So phase one was designed to stimulate the conversation. These are some of the questions that we asked during that um, first period. It wasn't intended to be a statistic gathering exercise, but we got over 60,000 responses, so we certainly gained some insights. Um, around 70% of those surveyed agreed that drug driving was a problem. 30% believed that they were safe to smoke on cannabis and drive. And interestingly, some of the cannabis users completely agreed with our notion that drug driving was a problem. They just didn't see that their drug of choice, cannabis, was a drug. A lot of them saw driving on cannabis as a recreation, everyone else's problem. You know, everyone else was the problem. They didn't see that they were posing a road safety risk, that other people were particularly drug dri drink, drink drivers. Drink driving they saw as much worse, and in fact, Many of them said that they would never jump in the car under the influence of alcohol, yet they still found it completely fine um, and could justify why they would under the influence of cannabis. Cracking down on drug driving will worsen drink driving was what some of them thought as well. Um, so into phase two of our campaign. It was very clear to us that we needed to talk to marijuana users, cannabis users, in a very individual way and separately from the bulk of all in all and sundry of drugs. So we developed a campaign that looked at sensible stoners, um, those that thought they were responsible um, with their use, those that drove within their own limits, and those limits could vary between the different punters, but an example might be, well, I wouldn't ever drive within 30 minutes of, um, of a smoke. Um, and some, their own experience told them that they were OK to drive on cannabis. Years of experience, they seemed to be fine. Some thought that the drug had little effect on their driving, as I've mentioned too, and some thought that because it made them slower and more alert, that they were better drivers, much better drivers than, than not being under the influence. Um, and they'd certainly never considered themselves a road safety risk. So that's what we had to start chipping away at. The campaign build, builds on what we learned in stage one of the campaign, and it was based on the key insight that um, when a person uses cannabis, things are slower than usual for them. Um, we aim to show them that if cannabis slows you down, then potentially their reaction time will be slowed, and this is not necessarily an ideal outcome in a driving situation. So here is um, what one of our approaches looked like. Hi. My name's Kev and this is my wife Bev. Uh, my name is Naresh and I am owner of these shops, me and my brother. People come in and buy food. I know they're smoking the naughty cigarette and take long time to order. I say, you too slow. You have a crispy duck. Sit down. <laughs> Weed? Pot. Oh Electric yeah, pot. Electric uh, Northern Green. Or New Zealand green. Yeah, they buy heaps, that's for real. Yeah. What about yeah. that young guy the other day? He was a bit slow, that fella. These guys are stoned. They were looking at my soap and laughing. My soap is not funny at all. This lady just looked at the cat. Looking, 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 looking. Why the lady looking the cat? I take away the cat and she make the order. Sometimes these guys have a trouble to, you know, with the F-Force machine. 
My machine is fine. Maybe you're a bit slow to them, eh? I'm trying to get him to choose, and he's holding up all the customers. He finally, he bought 12 frosty pigs. What's a grown man want 12 frosty pigs for? Yeah, you see him leave here and you think, God, I hope he's a bit more onto it behind the wheel. I think, how can she drive? Lady, be careful. If you can't uh, use the F-Post machine, how can you drive the car? So ultimately, we want them to make the link and start to question, that their, question their own behaviour behind the wheel. At this point in the campaign, we're certainly not yet in the space of asking them to change their behaviour. We're still at the stage of unsettling their complacency and getting them to just second guess and reconsider um, their comfort um, levels of driving under the influence. We're taking granny steps towards the long-term goal. While Shopkeepers, that was called, and that was actually a compilation of three different ads, which in hindsight, with only 15 minutes to speak, was potentially not wise, but you got to see all of them, so that's good. Um, so while Shopkeepers targeted a broad New Zealand audience, research from the Alcohol and Drugs Use Survey found that Māori men and women were 50% more likely to have used cannabis in the previous year. <laughs> than men and women in the general population. So we developed a campaign which specifically targets Māori through Māori TV, through a television um, ad and program integration. Um, and it was developed for Māori specifically with and by Māori and um, to be presented to them through a specific um, relevant channel for them. We strategically aired Blazed, this is, um, on Māori TV alone for the first few months of its life. Our research showed us that if we tried to target Māori through using this ad where we were blatantly targeting them through mainstream television, they would reject it and just feel, and feel that government was pointing their finger at them. Um, however, they did say that they would and could buy the message if it came to them through a credible source to them. And Māori TV was indeed a credible source. So we worked and partnered with Māori TV to bring this together. And here's the outcome of that. <laughs> when this car's finished, me and my dad will just cruise around being all scucks and doing mean-ass burnouts. Bro, my dad invented burnouts. He invented skitties, more like it. Not. My dad's the best at his driver, even when he's been blazing. My dad invented blazing. My dad gets the blazed at us. When my dad's blazed, he drives smooth as like this. Nah, move over, bro. My dad's been blazing. He drives like this. Nah, bro, like this. Nah, bro, like this. What street do I live on again? Hey, this ain't my car. Check out this cheeky fella. Looks just like me. I love this music. What music? I'm going five days an hour! It's too fast! It's too fast! Take the wheel, bro! I'm freaking out! I don't want it! Ah! Lights green, bro. Aye. Everything's so interesting. Ooh. <laughs> nah, nah, bro, you broke for wrong. My dad blazes and you drive like this. Vroom, vroom. And then there's missiles following my dad, and then it was keep dodging them all of the time, all of the tigers. And then my dad had some burgers in there, and there was heaps of burgers. And that far, there was heaps, man. I mean, there was heaps of bananas, and the monkeys came and had some bananas. And then my dad went off home, he had some fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm off. Sure. Catch you later. Later. So both the ads were using the observational um, insights from those that witnessed um, users under the influence. 
And they both targeted reasonably general audiences, albeit one specifically Māori, the other was specifically Pākehā. Um, we've recently used another mechanism to target younger audience, our uh, younger audience. This approach uses the fleeting nature of Snapchat um, messages in a way that Snapchat hasn't done before um, to demonstrate the risk of driving stoned. Our younger audience um, are notorious, notoriously, as, as we all know, hard to reach, cynical of our advertising, um, experts at tuning out of messages um, that they don't want to hear, especially if messages are coming from government. So we created Tinny Vision, a group of guys um, There we go. A group of guys that invited people to share with them their stoner kind of stories, journeys, um, on Snapchat. And we seeded the rumour through many different websites where they um, discussed um, their stories and, and cannabis use and hang out, hung out, um, and where they swapped stories. And every day, new audience added Tinny Vision to Snapchat. And over the course of a day, they would receive snaps, um, which showed these guys getting slowly getting slower bit by bit. Um, and within the end of the day, it kind of the guys decided to go for a drive. And this is that. Now for the weather. It's a bit foggy. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tinny TV. No, no, Tinny Television. Tinny Television? T t no, no, Tinny TV. Tinny TV? No, no, no. Again? What? Again? again? Tinny TV. Again. Is it a horse or a dolphin? Horse or a dolphin? Horse or a dolphin? Or wood? Chips. Ah! <laughs> bro, bro, what's going on in his head? <laughs> <laughs> just the wind, the wind. Eh? The, just the wind. Big burger, what about you, bro? Bro, four burgers, man. You <laughs> good? This fella, man, he had bacon, egg, cheese. Yo, Lee, yo, Lee, yo, Lee, yo, Lee, yo, Lee! So that was a new approach for us, and it was, it was a bit of a, a risk in that um, no, no advertiser had kind of used snaps to progressively fit, to get anyone to follow people and then th hit them with a social marketing message at the end, a how to live your life message at the end. So we didn't quite know how it would go, but it's been, um, commentary on social media has been overwhelmingly positive by the guys that followed it, um, with thousands of like and hundreds of likes and hundreds of comments, so it's been really pleasing. Um, and that compilation is running in cinema now. So we, we, that's pretty much where we've got to today. Um, we've only just begun, and it's um, small granny steps in a long-term process to change people's behaviour when it comes to driving on drugs. And it's going to take a long time, and it's going to take a lot more interventions than simply advertising, as we well, we're well aware of. We're just one cog in a big machine to make change. Um, but we're getting the issue on the table, and we're starting to get people to think about it in a different way, and that's key. So we will continue taking our granny steps um, at the pace that allows people to follow along with us. Thank you.